Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Madam Speaker, Honorable Ndombi Mehwe, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Nomvuyo Manamela, Chief Whip of the Governing Party, Honorable Kumalo, members of our Executive Council, ministers and deputy ministers, leaders of both the governing party and the opposition parties in our legislature, executive mayors and speakers of our municipalities, your excellencies, ambassadors and high commissioners, the veterans of the liberation struggle who have joined us this morning, leaders of business trade unions and traditional leaders, leaders of the faith-based sector, the sporting fraternity, women and youth in our province, the director general and the heads of departments, the provincial commissioner and the heads of law enforcement agencies, Badudi Bahaute. I welcome you to the 2020 State of the Province Address. As we meet at Sefako Makhatu Health Sciences University, previously known as Medunsa, it is appropriate to start by acknowledging the contribution of this university to the transformation of the political and health sciences professions in our country and in our continent. To the Vice Chancellor, Professor Likan Ayo Yusuf, and the entire university community, including the student leadership, we want you to know that you occupy a special place in our history and in the future development trajectory of our country. I will say a little bit more about this institution when dealing with the public health system later. Honorable members, this year's State of the Province address is more than a speech. Today, we are unveiling a plan of action. Today, we are unveiling Growing Cauten Together, a plan of action not just for five years, but a plan of action for this decade. This is what we are unveiling, unveiling today. You will all live here with this plan of action. It is not a plan. It is a plan of action. And this plan of action that we are unveiling today is about an outlining a trajectory of radical socioeconomic transformation and the pathways from where we are today poverty, unemployment, and inequality with the signposts of building a society based on social solidarity. So growing Houghton together is about realizing a truly non-racial society, a non-sexist society that embraces not just equality in law, but substantive equality in the way our people live, regardless of race, class, gender, religion, or origin. Our, our plan of action is about building a society based on human solidarity where no one is left out and no one is left behind. It is about building a society that protects and cares for the most vulnerable in our, in our communities. This plan of action is about ending crime, including the scourge of gender-based violence and creating a safe and secure environment for all. It's about growing, building a growing and inclusive economy that creates more jobs and offers opportunities to all South Africans, especially those who live in our province. It is about delivering a quality education and providing the relevant skills to all citizens so that they can play a productive and active role in our rapidly changing society and economy. It's about promoting healthy lifestyles 
and providing access to health care, universal health coverage to all. It's about changing the spatial landscape and spatial patterns in our province and connecting housing development to economic opportunities so that our people can live much closer to where they work in integrated, safer, and more cohesive communities. It is about ending, ending hunger and disease. It's about empowering millions of people to take charge of their own destinies by taking action where they live to raise their own living standards. It is about climate justice and taking action in our lifetime to protect our environment. It is about ensuring that we have access to internet connectivity, water, energy, and food security. It is about ensuring that women, youth, and persons with disability and members of the LGBTI community are treated equally and they are empowered. So this plan of action is about building the Houghton City region of our dreams. Madam Speaker, as we undertake this work in this new decade, we are conscious that we are not an isolated island, but we live in a world that is undergoing multiple transitions due to major mega trends that will fundamentally change the way we live and the way we work. What are some of those dominant trends? Some of those dominant trends include major demographic shifts that are taking place in the world. The world population will reach 8.5 billion in, in 2030 and 9.7 billion in 2050. At the moment, there are 7.7 .7 billion people living in the world. Half of the additional 2 billion people who will come in in the next few years will be living in sub-Saharan Africa. The second important dominant trend is that inequality is increasing and it is posing a serious moral hazard as well as, secu as a security threat in the whole world. The third dominant trend is about urbanization. Urbanization is reaching a point where 70 percent of humanity will live in cities by the end of this decade, in 2030. So we need a proper urban planning to provide adequate infrastructure and sustainable ecosystems that will offer a good quality of life to all the new citizens in our cities. The fourth mega trend is that te rapid technological change and digital transformation is changing entirely the way human beings will live and work. It will offer major opportunities, but it may also pose a serious threat to those who don't have the skills and the connectivity. It can become the preserve of the elite, depending on what we do to ensure that this technological change includes all the masses of our people. And lastly, the last mega trend is that climate change is posing an existential threat to all hum human beings, and it must be confronted with the agency and consistency it deserves. So, honorable members, all these mega trends impacting on the whole globe will also impact on us. In addition, we in South Africa face major social and economic challenges that arise from both the stubborn legacy of both apartheid and colonialism, as well as the faltering project of national democratic transformation of our country. We are now at a crossroads as a country. We can either find pathways to prosperity or descend further into the abyss of extreme poverty unparalleled inequality and consequent social unrest. So the future of our country and the future of our province is in our hands. Madam Speaker, in 2019, a group of researchers and experts from universities and NGOs in our country 
under the auspices of Mapungube Institute of Strategic Reflection, published a report on the scenarios of what South Africa is likely to be in 2030. And they call that report in Dulamiti Scenarios, South Africa 2030. Let me summarize the significance of this research and point to what it means for us and why our plan of action growing out and together must deal with the issues that the scenarios and the scenario planners and the researchers highlighted. The first scenario painted by these researchers was what they called a Guara Guara scenario. This is the worst case scenario our country could be in by 2030, a scenario where things get worse on every development indicator, leading to a total breakdown of public order fueled by anger amongst our people, anger about a dysfunctional state that is incapable of providing services, anger about rising poverty, anger about increasing inequality, anger about rampant corruption, and anger about unrelating climate crisis. So the Guara Guara scenario is the worst. It is possible if we don't do something to end up in this worst case scenario. The researchers also pointed to the second scenario, which they called Isibu Jwa. This is a scenario that represents a lot of where we are right now, where there are flickers of hope existing side by side with moments of despair. It's where our country is zigzagging forward and backward at the same time. Where there is change, but change is not enough, and people are getting impatient. Where people can get tired and exhausted and lose hope and retreat into their own enclaves, either of poverty or enclaves of privilege. Unless we do something drastically and immediately, we can actually move from where we are, which is a mixture of progress and serious, serious problems and descend into a Guara Guara scenario. But the researchers also pointed to the third scenario, which is called Naele Walk. Naele Walk. This is the best case scenario where our country recovers from the current socioeconomic, political, and moral crisis. Our country can recover and be offer a better life for all, where there's tangible change, and such change is felt by people in all sectors of our society, where unemployment, poverty, crime, and inequality are reduced drastically, where the state start to implement the National Development Plan vigorously and regains credibility through upholding high ethical standards and being able to deliver on what it says it wants to do. So, honorable members, we want to be in the scenario where things are getting better, uh, Naele walk. So what are we going to do to get there? We believe that most of the policy interventions that have been announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa and what we are going to outline today in our plan of action can take our nation and our province closer to this best case scenario, provided we implement all these measures and interventions with a great deal of agency, a great deal of consistency, and a great deal of discipline. So growing out and together is inspired by the desire to turn our country around to avoid our country descending into chaos and anarchy where things are getting worse. But growing out and together is also about moving our country where we are now. We don't want a mixture of progress. We don't want to take one step forward and two steps back. So growing out and together is about turning around our country and not just offering a flicker of hope which is followed by some despair, but offering real meaningful change, and this must be done in our lifetime. Accordingly, 
We have outlined priorities as a follow-up to what we have announced in July last year. These priorities include the following, that the priority focusing on the economy, jobs, and infrastructure, the priority focusing on education, skills, and healthcare, focusing on sustainable human settlements, new cities, and rapid land release, focusing, focusing on community safety, social cohesion, and food security, focusing on sustainable future for all, building a capable, ethical, and developmental state, and lastly, consciously being part of building a better Africa and a better world. So, honorable members, today we outline specific measures we are taking in this first year of this decade to ensure we get to the, to the desired destination. Our first and foremost goal in the economy is to grow our economy in order to massively increase the number of new jobs created in our economy. And at the same time, we must sustain and preserve existing jobs. So our number one goal is about jobs with regard to the economy. We will achieve this goal by focusing on what we call 10 high growth sectors of the economy in culture. By focusing on specific industries that have greater potential to create more jobs, and these industries are located in specific corridors of our province. We are now ready, after doing our work in partnership with various sectors of industry, we are ready to take action and in the next five years to deal with these issues sector by sector. So, honorable members, what are these 10 high growth sectors that are going to be driving the economy of, of Houghton. Firstly, we will focus on energy, the energy sector with the focus on new technologies and on the need to diversify the energy mix, not just at a national level, but in the Houghton province. Secondly, we will focus on the sector transport and logistics. Thirdly, we will focus on ICT, media, and digital services, what is otherwise referred to as the digital economy. The fourth sector will be tourism and hospitality. We will look at how this sector is supported to create more jobs. We will also focus on agri-food and agribusiness, particularly the agro-processing value chains of our agriculture to unlock this potential to create more employment and include more SMMEs, black, black business people, and those in the township economy. We will also focus on the, trans, on the construction and infrastructure sector. We will, honorable members, focus on the automotive sector, the aerospace and defense sectors, which are much stronger in, the, in this in this region where we are, in this metro where we are, the automotive, aerospace, and defense sector are very, very strong. We will also focus on financial services, which is currently the key driver of employment. We will focus on the unlocking the potential of the cultural and creative industries. And lastly, honorable members, there is a new sector of our economy which any country that forgets about it will be left behind. That is the cannabis industry. We in Gauteng will focus on the industrialization and agro-processing of the cannabis industry. <laughs> and unlocking the cannabis industry, especially, especially for use for medicinal purposes and and many other areas such as health care, including skin care. I don't want to be those part of those who want to use it for other things. <laughs> so, honorable members, what are we doing? 
What are we doing to unlock the potential of these sectors? We are working with relevant national departments, and there are specific national departments we are working with every day, sent at the center of which is the DTI. We are also working with state-owned enterprises. We are working with development finance institutions and business leaders in each of these sectors to look at what we in Gauteng can do for every sector to double the number of jobs. We will improve the ease of doing business in each sector, develop skilled workforce for each sector, and build enabling infrastructure, including industrial infrastructure, such as the special economic zones and the industrial parks in various corridors of our province. All this work will translate into social compacts between the, the leaders of industry and organized labor, as well as government, on how we grow these various sectors in our province. Honorable members, by 2025, the Houghton City region will have three fully operating special economic zones in Ekuruleni, in Tswani, and in Sidibeng. plus a special agro-processing zone. This is an SEZ of a special type for agriculture and agro-processing in the West End Corridor. In addition to this three plus one special economic zones, we will have 15 industrial parks that are revitalized in the different corridors. 12 agri-parks for agro-processing, and five agro-processing facilities in all these five corridors in Gauteng. There will be a single industrial ecosystem that supports the 10 high growth sectors. So if you have an industrial park in Kateong or in Soweto or in, uh, in Harangkua as we have here, and I'll say more when I talk to the community later this afternoon in Harangkua, about what we are doing with these industrial parks. If we have these industrial parks in our communities, they will be deliberately linked to the 10 high growth sectors in the, in the province, so that they are not just survivalist business hubs. They must, be, they, must be, they must be entry points into the major sectors of our economy. Honorable members, the single ec industrial ecosystem will also bring in township SMS, SMMEs into the major sectors of the economy. By 2030, Kauten will also have the biggest inland hub and dry port in our continent. This is the Transnet Tambo Springs Logistics Highway in Ekuruleni. This will be the biggest, this is going to be the biggest logistics hub in the continent. Tambo Springs adds to the many other aspects of our globally competitive industrial infrastructure, which is going to give the Gauteng economy a major boost as we enter the period of the Africa continental free trade area. Globally competitive infrastructure and logistics capabilities will help unleash the, the 10 high growth sectors in our economy. They will help create more job opportunities and facilitate the entry of new SMMEs and township businesses, as well as black industrialists into the mainstream of the Gauteng economy. Specifically, in the next five years, the Gauteng provincial government will spend 60 billion rands on building and maintaining infrastructure. This includes social and economic infrastructure and the creation and maintenance of this infrastructure alone will create additional 100,000 jobs in the Gauteng economy. In addition, this infrastructure will help us contribute to the development of 50 black industrialists in Gauteng. We will also upscale a program we have tested in the past five years, which we call Welfare to Work. This is a program focusing on 
unemployed young women who currently depend on state grants who, who must graduate to self-employment in various sectors of the economy. We have succeeded in the first five years to do so by reaching at least 30,000 young women. And in this term, we are scaling this program to 100,000 young women across the province because we want these young women to stand up and work for themselves. They are capable to do so. We have tested this model. It does work. We have to upscale this model to reach more young women because the grants are for the elderly and people with disability. The young people must work for themselves. And assisting some of our youth to enter the labor market, including those who have been able to establish their own businesses, as reported at the end of term last year, we want to take SEPO 1 million into different sectors of the economy of Gauteng, particularly these 10 high growth sectors. So how are we going to do this? Over the next five years, we will step up economic empowerment and youth employment as follows. So one of the important things we want to do on an annual basis from now, we will spend 4 billion rands of the Gauteng budget buying goods and services from 2,000 township enterprises. We have tested this model in the past five years. This model does work. And we want to roll out this model again and show that 2,000 township businesses in Gauteng are able to, to, get, to get work from our government by providing goods and services to our government. In addition to township businesses, we will use our infrastructure program to support 50 black industrialists, enabling them to enter the 10 high growth sectors of the Gauteng economy. We will use our infrastructure budget to support these 10 black industrialists to enter the main sectors of our economy. We will also support 50 emerging black farmers and 20 black agro-processors to help them turn their businesses into full-scale commercial agri-food enterprises. We will support 500 cooperatives in the care economy through an, an enabling policy framework that will ensure that our government continues to buy uni school uniforms, dignity packs, food packs from for vulnerable households from these enterprises. We know what the problem was. We are sorting out that problem. About Secular 21, we are going to make sure that we buy directly from these cooperatives. They can't come via a big enterprise or a big business. They, we must buy this directly from these cooperatives. And we will ensure that we introduce a, an enabling policy framework that deals with the problems created by Secular 21. And lastly, we are going to ensure that 250,000 young people enter the, la the labor market through decent employment in these 10 major sectors of our economy. The people of Gauteng, we will go further than what I've said. We will use this all this government budget for goods and services to promote industrialization in our province. Everything we do, the schools we build, the clinics we build, we must also ensure that we buy construction material made by businesses that are South African businesses. We can't just bring construction material from other economies and support the creation of jobs in other economies. People in Gauteng who are able to manufacture construction material, you must know, from now onwards, the houses we build, the schools we build, all the infrastructure we build, we want to make sure that the material is manufactured in the Gauteng economy, and at the very least, in the South African economy. At least 75% of construction and infrastructure material must be made in our local economy here. 
Honorable members, we said in July 2019 that we want installation, repair, and maintenance of our public facilities to be done by township artisans. We, we, we will start this year in 2020 to introduce this program in the maintenance of some of our facilities like hospital. I am happy to report that this installation, maintenance, and repair program is also supported by private sector companies such as the German Chamber of Commerce, which is very keen to work with us to extend this maintenance program by township artisans must not only be for government facilities, but also in the private sector. And the German Chamber of Commerce says they will work with us to ensure that businesses, especially German businesses, will also procure civil services from these township businesses. So I want to use this opportunity to challenge all the other chambers and all the other sectors to join us in this initiative. Honorable members, as per the commitment I made in July last year, the provincial government will introduce the Township Economic Development Bill in the legislature in June this year. In June this year, we are introducing the Township Economic Development Act. This new law will nullify all bylaws that make it difficult for township businesses to operate. It will nullify all bylaws that frustrate and suppress the growth and operations of SMMEs and the informal sector. It will also nullify the tendency for the law enforcement agencies to harass small businesses in our communities, including in the CBDs, especially those that need support to be able to observe the law. So, honorable members, the Township Economic Development Act is in the pipeline. It will help us grow township businesses and make them the site of wealth and job creation in our economy as part of our efforts to grow Houghton together. Significant work is being done in our efforts to grow the economy, especially in bringing sectors like the taxi industry into the mainstream of our economy. So we are working very closely with municipalities to rezone and develop taxi ranks into retail and commercial hubs that will create markets for local mechanics, local panel beaters, retailers, food sellers, and manufacturers. Another important goal in our economy is to ensure that we increase exports and trade into our continent. The 10 high growth sectors I've referred to earlier will be the way in which Gauteng enters the, the African economy. We have identified in these particular areas goods and services that we must pioneer as Gauteng's unique competitive advantage. Honorable members, we are ready for the African continental free trade area. Through Houghton Growth and Development Agency, we intend to increase exports to the continent by 15% by the end of 2025. In 2030, inter-Africa trade should contribute to the creation and maintenance of 150,000 jobs in the Houghton economy, an increase from the current 50,000 jobs. As we speak, 50,000 jobs in our economy are a result of inter-Africa trade. We are not doing enough. And in, the, in this decade, we want to increase that to 150,000 jobs. We also want to increase exports to major regions in the world by 10% by the end of 2025. A critical success factor in achieving our goals is to ensure the creation of an innovation ecosystem and world-class infrastructure in the Houghton economy. This we will do by attracting both foreign and direct investment into the special economic zones, the agri-parks and the industrial parks that I've referred to earlier. 
At the same time, we are working with universities, research institutes, and private sector innovation centers to build a more integrated innovation ecosystem that will support the 10 high growth sectors in the Gauteng economy. Honorable members, the Gauteng government is also supporting researchers in various universities to promote innovation, research, and development in various areas of our economy. We do need a state-of-the-art infrastructure network in order to take forward the, of the goals I have referred to. And this infrastructure includes the security of supply of clean water, modern energy, efficient and reliable public transport, connectivity, and lo the logistics infrastructure in our province. So fellow residents of Gauteng, I want to say it as we start this decade that water security is fast becoming an issue of grave concern in our country and in our province. Gauteng faces major water security risks. Our water usage is too high and therefore unsustainable. Let me give you the figures. We in Gauteng use 300 liters per person per day, which is way above both the world average of 173 liters per person per day and the national average of 235 liters per person per day. So we in Gauteng are using water in a way that is not sustainable. We must take urgent decisions and drastic steps to reduce water demand and water losses in our province. In, so in order to do this, we must ensure that there is a security of sufficient supply of water in the Houghton City region. We will do this by increasing investment in bulk water infrastructure, working with our municipalities in order to diversify what the water mix in Houghton. We will deploy new and smart technologies to capture groundwater, to reuse waste water for other purposes, to treat acid mine drainage and ensure rainwater harvesting. This we are already doing working with national government, particularly the Department of Water and Sanitation. We have established a Houghton City region-wide war room on water security, composed of national departments and agencies and specialists from water research institutions and our municipalities. The mandate of this water security war room is to implement the Houghton Water Security Plan. The war room will be chaired by myself and coordinated by the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs under the leadership of MEC Maile. In addition, honorable members, we must tackle the energy crisis. The current load shedding by ESCOM is destroying the economy and negatively impacting on our people's lives. In load shedding is really destroying us. And as Houghton Province, I must remind you that as Houghton Province, we have long been advocating for a more active role by municipalities and provincial governments in addressing the problem of energy security. Instead of waiting and whinging, we must all act decisively to safeguard energy security and enable a just energy transition to a low carbon economy in our lifetime. We in Gauteng have adopted the energy security strategy and established the energy office in 2016. The key objective of this energy security strategy is to diversify the energy mix and expand energy generation capacity, particularly in our metropolitan municipalities, all of which have got an important role to play in energy provision. However, our energy security strategy could not be implemented for two reasons. 
Firstly, there was no enabling national policy framework to support decentralized energy initiatives. In addition, some of our metros did not take their work seriously about putting the politics aside and working together with us to address energy security, particularly in those municipalities where there were energy entities that could be modernized and be transformed uh, uh, so that they can be bring more energy into the Gauteng uh, economy. So, honorable members, I want to welcome President Ramaphosa's pronouncement during the State of the Nation address, which will, which, which will allow municipalities, the private sector, and individual citizens to bring in additional capacity to the grid from renewable energy, hydropower, battery storage, and fuel cell technology. This is what we as Gauteng have always been calling for in the Gauteng energy security strategy. So in April this year, next month, the provincial government together with Salga will make a submission to Minister Gwede Mantashe for a ministerial determination to, to help us to unlock renewable energy projects in Gauteng through what the window opened by the Integrated Resource Plan, IRP 2019. So what is it specifically we will be doing? We will ensure that we use this opportunity created by the President's announcement and the IRP 2019 to fast track the development of alternative energy sources in our, in our province and unlock the potential that is lying in the, in the three metros which have all either decommissioned energy agencies or they are undertaking new energy initiatives. So we do have shovel-ready solar energy projects in Gaute. We have mothballed power stations that must be recommissioned. We also want to increase the use of hydrogen fuel cell technology in the new developments and new cities across the province. Madam Speaker, in line with the commitment we made in the last State of the Province address, we are also improving public transport. And I want to report that we have now established the Gauteng Energy, the Gauteng Transport Authority. I spoke about the Act in July that we have passed the Act now we have established the Houghton Transport Authority. The immediate focus of the authority is to give life to all transport plans of various municipalities in Houghton over this decade. The first priority of this authority is to establish a single ticket so that those who are using buses, taxis, trains, the, including the Hau train and any other mode can do so, move from one part of Houghton to the other using a single ticket. This is our first priority. Of course, in the end, we want an integrated, reliable, affordable, efficient public transport, and we want smart and green mobility in the Houghton city region by the end of this decade. In line with the directive I gave in July 2019, MEC Mamabulo and the department have undertaken public transport improvement plans for major nodes in the five development corridors in our province. Major intermodal facilities have been visited and assessed. So going forward, we are now going to be focusing on renovating and improving the functionality of these intermodal facilities. Investment in public transport is critical to ensure that we transform the economy of our province, we, but we also transform the spatial landscape of our province. So honorable members, our transport approach is in, informed by our program of transformation, modernization, and reindustrialization. We have noted the release of the report of the Competition Commission recently, 
on public transport. I have recently directed MEC Mamabulo to engage immediately with the Competition Commission on the proposals that they have made, including some of the findings that they have made. And there are interesting proposals that they've also made, which will help us fast track what we want to do with the integration of Metro Rail and the Gau Train in Gauteng Province. Honorable members, in the next five years, the Gauteng Provincial Government will rehabilitate and upgrade 18 major arterial roads in all the five development corridors in Gauteng, especially in Sidibeng and the West Rand. I would like to make it clear that all the work we are doing on improving our road infrastructure is linked to catalyzing major investments in, in the new economic nodes in the five development corridors across our province. Some of these investments, I'll refer to them shortly. We have also been working with the private sector to ensure that ICT companies collaborate with us and share resources on the rollout of affordable broadband connectivity and free Wi-Fi to poor households across the Gauteng city region. Honorable members, the work of creating the Silicon Valley of Africa at our innovation hub is currently under on track. This includes the integration of the innovation hub, our network of ECASI labs, the Simulu Hong Center, universities and research institutions, and integrating this to create a special economic zone based on high tech and innovation. And this work, honorable members, will be driven by the Premier's Digital Transformation Advisory Panel, which has been established and will be unveiled in March this year. Honorable members, we must work together to take full advantage of the opportunities created by the digital economy and prepare our society for a future in which technology will be central to everything we do. We must prepare our schools and universities, our healthcare system, our law enforcement agencies, our governance system, our businesses and civil society for, for digital transformation not just talking about the fourth industrial revolution, beyond the current wave of the fourth industrial revolution, including to the fifth industrial revolution, which is also soon taking hold. When others, when we are talking about the fourth industrial revolution, others are already talking about the fifth industrial revolution. Honorable members, attracting investment in the Gauteng economy is one of the key priorities of the, this ANC-led administration. This is one of the major focal point areas of my job as the Premier of Gauteng, this economic hub of our country. Accordingly, FDI Markets says over the past five years, the Gauteng city region has attracted 447 foreign direct investment projects into the Gauteng economy and these projects are worth 264 billion rands. And these projects have created 469,000 jobs between 2014 and 2019. This is the past five years. During this decade, we will increase our drive on investment to unlock major corridors and economic nodes across the five corridors of our province. We will do so with a far-reaching transformative agenda, with an agenda to transform the spatial form or the spatial morphology of our province, with an agenda to bring in more black businesses in the Gauteng economy, with an agenda to grow the participation of SMMEs in our economy with an agenda to bring in more township businesses in our economy. In this regard, honorable members, I want to share with you some of the projects that are underway 
in the five development corridors of our province. In the northern corridor, which is where we are in the city of Tswani, our vision and our goal is to position this, this city economy as the hub of the automotive industry in our country, not just in our province. Of course, we are not only focusing on the automotive sector. We are focusing on agriculture and agro-processing, defense and aerospace, and the aviation cluster in Centurion. We are also focusing on the innovation R&D system, which includes our universities, including Sefako Mahatu Health Sciences University. Honorable members, the capital city of our province will also be a key area of growth of the township economy including the revitalization of township industrial hubs. So in support of this vision about the kind of Tswani we want, current projects, we have projects on the pipeline right now. The current projects are taking place in Tswani. Not just a dream, the current projects include the expansion of the BMW and Nissan plants here in Roslin, just next door. And this and Roslin is going to grow into an auto city quite soon. The Ford investment in Silverton, and we have launched the automotive special economic zone in November last year. The development of Manly, Maine, which we have been working, the city and the province with, with the investors around that, and many know that the east of Swan is changing dramatically, and the development of the Castle Gateway precinct in Centurion. This will also include the industrial parks such as Babelehi, Harangua, and Ek Industrial. So these projects that are currently underway, honorable members, will bring at least 50 billion rands into the Tswani economy during this decade. And these projects are underway. They are, they are currently unfolding. In the Eastern Corridor, which is in the city of Ekuruleni, our goal and our vision is to consolidate Ekuruleni as Africa's largest erythropolis and a major hub for advanced manufacturing for the transport and logistics sector in sub-Saharan Africa. The other sectors in Ekuruleni will include rail and bus manufacturing, defense and aerospace sector, food, beverages, and agro-processing. In support of this vision of turning Ekuruleni into Africa's largest erythropolis, there are specific projects underway in Ekuruleni. And one of those projects is the current work we have done to build OR Tambo IDZ, which is being turned into a special economic zone. We, are expand we have already started work on the IDZ. There are companies operating there. But we want to turn that IDZ beyond agro-processing into a jewelry manufacturing and mineral beneficiation hub, as well as a place where hydrogen fuel cell technology is going to be pioneered. The development taking place around Tambo Springs, which I have ref referred to earlier, the Prasa Gibela rail manufacturing hub, which has got outstanding manufacturing of, of the, the trains for our continent taking place right now, the OR Tambo International Airport cargo terminal development, which is also underway now, as well as the many projects taking place on the R21 highway. Those of you who have an opportunity to drive from Tswani to, the, to OR Tambo Airport on R21 will see that space is getting transformed every day. And this is part of the development of the Eretropolis. Honorable members, I want you to join me in welcoming the announcement by President Cyril Ramaphosa about the building of Oliver Tambo University of Science and Technology in Ekuruleni. <laughs> this university is a great value proposition and a boost to advancing manufacturing capabilities and innovation in the Ekuruleni Eretropolis. We have been working with the mayor. I see the mayor is sitting there, and he likes tweeting a lot. 
We have been working with the mayor to lobby for this university over a period of time. And we are now following up after the announcement made by the president to ensure that this university becomes a reality during this decade between now and 2030. This university must become a reality in our lifetime. It must become a reality. Collectively, all the pipeline of projects in Ekuruleni currently underway, not the new ones, those currently underway are worth two, 200 billion rands. The pipeline of projects underway are worth 200 billion rands in Ekuruleni. Honorable members, in the Southern Corridor, where the regional economy suffered significant deindustrialization due to the collapse of the steel industry, our goal is to build a new economy in the Val, an economy based on a revitalized steel sector, based on logistics, agriculture, agro-processing. And this economy will be anchored around a new special economic zone in the Val, which brings together the two sides of the Val, across the Val River, the side of the Free State, and the side of Gauteng. And the, it is, this is where the Val River City will be developed. But it's not just the Val River City. The Val River City will be anchored by a new special economic zone in the Val. Honorable members, we would like in the Val also to work with the two universities, that is the University of Technology in the Val, the VUT, and the Northwest University. Those universities, those who know the Val would know, those universities are close to each other, those campuses. We want to develop an integrated university town and university village there, around those universities, as part of the new Val River City. And this integrated university town will have university accommodation for students. It will also have university accommodation for the, for the academics and the workers who are working in that area. This is a great vision for us because the two universities will constitute an innovation ecosystem such as in the new Val River City, such as we have in other cities such as Boston. So, honorable members, the current projects of pipeline, project pipeline in the Val amount to 40 billion rands of investment which will come into the Val economy. There were major delays on the development of the Val River City. And one of the key delays was about bulk infrastructure funding. And I am glad that we have unlocked this, working with, with the presidency on another city, which I will come back to later. We have found a model of funding new developments in regions and in uh, corridors such as the West Rand and Sidibeng, where the municipalities do not have bulk infrastructure. So let me now turn to the West Rand corridor. We are making significant progress in diversifying the West Rand economy from an economy that relied on mining in the past to an economy where today it includes bus manufacturing by Basmark agribusiness and agro-processing, renewable energy investments and tourism centered around the World Heritage Site. The release of 30,000 hectares of land by Sibanya Gold has helped us to unlock these developments in the West Rand and to unlock major developments. So, honorable members, some of the key projects on the on projects on, on the, our project pipeline in the West Rand include the, the development of the new smart city as announced by the president. That is the Lanseria smart city. I know that it is both in Johannesburg, in the West Rand, and in Swani, in that node. But by all accounts, this is a, a new smart city of the West Rand, by all accounts. So in addition to the smart city in the West Rand, 
the development of a mega special agro-processing park and logistic hub is currently taking place on the N12. There are a group of investors and business people who are present here today who are working with us to unlock a major development around the N12 highway, which links Johannesburg and the West Rand. And this N12 highway will be a site for the develop, the develop the new bus, bus mark plant manufacturing as well as a new agro-processing and logistics hub. So earlier on, I spoke about an agro-processing special economic zone, which is a, an SEZ of a special type. So that SEZ of a special type focusing on agro-processing and agriculture is going to be located here on the N12 corridor in the West Rand, uh, and it's going to be a major hub of development for urban agriculture and agro-processing project, as well as for export of, of food and beverages to the various parts of the world. So for the West Rand alone, these projects are worth 60 billion rands. So honorable members, let me turn to the central corridor. In the central corridor, which is Johannesburg, our vision and our goal is to consolidate Johannesburg as Africa's financial and technological nerve center. That's what we must do. Already Johannesburg is a nerve center and technological hub of our continent. So the key sectors in the Johannesburg economy will include business services, pharmaceutical industry, innovation, research, and development. Already, the project, we, many of us, when we, we drive through Johannesburg, we can see major investments, some of which I spoke about in 2015, taking place in Rosbank, in Santen, in Midrand, and in Fourways. In that part of Johannesburg, especially the northern part of Johannesburg, major investments are taking place at the moment. But it is important that we don't only focus on the north. The Johannesburg CBD revitalization is also a very important area of investment, and that's why the, both the legislature and the Houghton provincial government are not going to abandon the CBD. We are not going to abandon the CBD. We are going to continue to invest in the revitalization of the CBD working with the city of Johannesburg. We know in, there are investments that are coming into the CBD of Johannesburg right now. In addition, in Johannesburg, we must focus on the south of Johannesburg. From Soweto to Orange Farm, the areas such as Southern Farm are important for the city of Johannesburg. Again, there are important projects taking place from the N12 corridor uh, to the southern part of Johannesburg. So if you look at all the projects pipeline of private sector and public sector investments in Johannesburg, in the next five years, they, they are more than 200 billion rents. So honorable members, these projects I'm referring to are shovel ready and many of them are either taking place so there's construction on site whilst others are in the final stages of development, others are going through approvals, and some are awaiting infrastructure that I've referred to earlier on. This infrastructure will be unlocked in a new way that we have now found with the presidency, especially working on the Lanceria Smart City. We have found a new way of supporting bulk infrastructure that un unlocks op economic opportunities and spatial transformation in, in our province. And we are confident this will help not just Houteng, but it will also help other parts of our country. So, honorable members, in order to really give greater momentum to these investments and drive an investment agenda, we have established the Houteng City Region Investment Council which is chaired by the Premier. The Investment Council's role is to accelerate existing investment initiatives in all the five corridors. 
by ensuring that we unblock any regulatory inhibitions. All bureaucratic red tape must be removed. And one thing we have already succeeded with is that the EIAs used to take three years. They now take 45 days in Gauteng. So we have reduced environmental impact assessment approvals from three years to 45 days in Gauteng. We know, honorable members, that we have to do much more to, to ensure that our province develops and attracts more private sector investment. We must invest in supportive infrastructure. We must streamline government decisions. This, this thing that the business people are still waiting for a municipality or a department of government to make a decision six months later is a matter of the past. We are going to make sure that all municipalities under this council, all the municipalities will approve everything that goes to the municipality will also come to my desk to see how long it takes to approve this development. Everything that goes to a department will also come to my desk for me to monitor how long it takes for this to be approved. These are some of the important interventions we are making. So the investment council will be supported by a technical team in the office of the premier made up of specialists and agencies of both municipalities and the provincial government. I want to say to you, honorable members, we have used the launch of the, of the Tswani Automotive Hub also as an experiment. Much as we use the smart city as the experiment for unlocking bulk infrastructure, we have used the Tswani Automotive Hub as an experiment for fast decision making to unlock investment. And this is working for us. We can only hope for better and faster decision making in the coming years. So honorable members, let me talk now about the human settlements, new cities, and rapid land release. You do know that they, there's no doubt that over the past 25 years, we have had unprecedented levels of housing delivery in Gauti. I will continue to report that in the past 25 years, 1.2 million houses were built in this province through government subsidies. That's public, house, public housing. And this has provided accommodation, decent accommodation to close to 4 million people in our province. However, the scars of apartheid remain evident in the spatial settlements across our cities. Most of the new houses we have built are, are on the periphery of our cities, away from economic nodes and centers of production. So we have introduced the mega human settlements and the new cities as a way to break with this apartheid spatial patterns. And I've reported already that we have found a new way of harvesting and bringing together funding, both public sector funding and state funding for these developments to take place. I want to come to an important commitment I made in the State of the Province Address last year. As part of fast-tracking rapid land release, we will, from April to June, release 10,000 serviced sites in different corridors of Gauteng to those who want to build houses for, for themselves. Between April and June this year, we will release 10,000 service sites. This 10,000 is only the beginning of the 100,000 service sites that we want to release to different people in our province who are tired of waiting for a government house. No, we will not tell you where, because you will go and occupy that, those tents. We will not tell you where. We will release 10,000 without telling you where. We are going to ben beneficiaries of our rapid land release nowhere. 
We are coming to every corridor to make sure that in the first three months of this year, 10,000 stands will be released so that people can start to build houses for themselves. <laughs> Honorable members, I want to say that we are also working with national government on urban renewal projects. As I made a commitment in July that we are going to focus on the Alexander renewal, Everton renewal, Cliptown renewal, Beckersdale renewal, and Winterfeld renewal. These projects we know. These projects, this project, some of these projects got stuck in the, in the, past, in the past few years. We are unlocking them, and this process is led by MEC Maile and the Minister, the Minister of Human Settlements in the Republic. So the Minister of Human Settlements and MEC Maile are leading this process of urban renewal projects. Honorable members, I would like to make it loud and clear that we have also adopted the land invasion prevention strategy. We have adopted the land invasion prevention strategy to deal decisively with the criminal syndicates that are the criminal syndicates and political entrepreneurs that are invading land across Houghton province. We have set aside, in addition, specific resources. We have allocated resources to do two more things, to deal with the upgrading of hostels, which are a sore sight in our province at the moment, and the informal settlements, to upgrade the informal settlement. Now, let me tell you something. If we don't stop the illegal invasion of land, the informal settlements will continue to grow. Honorable members, honorable members, in July 2019, I said to you that we are going to unlock the township real estate market. What have we done since July? We have been working with the National Housing Finance Corporation and two social entrepreneurs organizations, INDLU and UMASTAN as social capital entrepreneurs. We have been working with them because they have been piloting this program of how to upgrade back rooms and backyards in the different parts of our townships. We, have, we are going to work with them to ensure that we formalize the development of these back rooms and they are properly connected to the grid because some of these backyards are not connected formally to the grid, and they undermine municipalities' revenue base. We're going to work with them, and by so doing, we will unlock 250,000 opportunities, more opportunities for decent rental accommodation over the next five to 10 years. The development of post-apartheid cities and new economic nodes is something we have been articulating since 2015. 
And in the 2015 State of the Province Address, I know some of the doubting Thomases in our legislature said, these things you are talking about would not happen. But these skeptics need to look at new investments that are rising everywhere. Midrand, which is where I live, is different. Midrand is different today. Four Ways is developing into a different place. Lanseria City is developing. Roslyn is growing into an auto city. The R21 is developing into an eretropolis. These things are taking place in our lifetime. Let those who have eyes see. Honorable members, I would like to thank our president, President Cyril Ramaphosa. President Cyril Ramaphosa has, has now given momentum to the new cities with the announcement he made on Lanseria New City. Let's give our president a big round of applause. <laughs> we are working together with investors but we are also working together with provincial governments in the free state and in the northwest. Because some of these cities, including Lanseria's smart city, is going not, it's not just in Gauteng, it is also going in the northwest area in Madibe municipality. It is going to be linking Gauteng and the northwest. As I said, the Val River city is going to be linking the free state and Gauteng. So, honorable members, I want to say these new cities are not going to be the cities for the elite. These new cities must bring in different classes and different social categories in those cities. We cannot build cities for the elite. We want to build cities that are characterized by social integration and social cohesion. The rich and the poor must live side by side in our new cities. We are not building cities of apartheid. We are building post-apartheid cities. There can be no social exclusion in our new cities. Honorable members, I would like to deal with the issues we are facing and what we are going to do in this decade with regard to education, skills, and health. The centerpiece of our human development paradigm is about building a healthy, skilled, and productive nation. For this to be done, we need an education system that can unleash the full potential of all citizens and prepare current generation for the future, for the demands of the future. Accordingly, we are investing in people and we have made investing in people the number one priority of this ANC-led administration. 85% of our budget is about investing in people. It's about education, health, and social development interventions to give the poor a, a start in their, in their own efforts to build their own life. So with regard to education, honorable members, in the last decade, we have significantly changed the face of public education in our province by improving educational outcomes, particularly in the township and rural schools of Haute. The achievement gap between a school in a middle-class suburb and a school in the township was, was the achievement gap was 24% in 2008. We have slashed that gap from 24% to 2.7% in 2019. <laughs> and this needs interpretation. It means the chance to get good education now is even more in townships than it was in 2008. And this we see every year when we see our children in township schools being amongst the top performers in, 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 in Gauteng province. In addition, 
we have achieved another important outcome. The throughput rate has improved from 71% in 2008 to 77% in 2019. In other words, now to give an interpretation, in other words, we used to lose 29% of learners along the system. We have reduced that. We can account for 77% of learners who start grade 12, who start grade one, we are able to account for them 12 years later in grade 12 in Gauke, 77% of those. But let me tell you what our goal is, which MEC Lisuf is leading. Our goal is to increase the throughput rate to 95% by the end of this decade. We want to, to make sure that all children who start, who start grade one, 12 years later, those children are going to university, they are going to TVET colleges, they are ready for the world of work. That's what we want to do. But we are setting our eyes also on something that is bedeviling our education system. Most problems in our education system experienced by universities, experienced by high schools, is because our education system is weak in the foundation phases. Poor performance in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, including in accounting and economics. In grade 12, we know there are less and less children who pass grade 12 in the STEM subject. The reason is the problems in the early years of schooling. So it is for this reason, honorable members, that we are now going to pay attention to the foundation phases and all primary schools in Gauteng. As I made a commitment in July 2019, Emi Lisuf is now ready. He has completed the assessment of all primary schools in Gauteng, and we are ready to, re to release the report to show what each primary school's performance is, especially in critical subjects that are gateway subjects for our country. He has not only produced a report, our Houting Department of Education has also developed a program of action as part of growing Houting together to intervene in every primary school in Houting so that we correct these weaknesses in the foundation phases. In addition to this, in addition to this, in addition to the primary schools, Madam Speaker, we will support 700,000 children aged grade, aged, aged zero to four years in childhood development centers across Hauke. 700,000 children in ECD centers, in crashes in Kauten, we are tracking even those crashes that are operating in problematic spaces. We have been registering all of them, we are tracking them down because we want to set proper standards for them. Our children can't be going there to just sing and sleep. There is much more they can do in those. So we will be providing funding to all of them. We will ensure there is a proper curriculum which is now being developed by education, but we are going to train also all ECD facilitators for this. They, and they must be given proper certificates to demonstrate what they know about children. Every crash that's operating in Houten must also comply with the norms and standards because we can't leave our children in unsafe spaces. And those norms and standards will include a proper curriculum, the training of the facilitators, but also that the facilities themselves meet municipal standards uh, for approval. Honorable members, it's not just the, the zero to four years that we are focusing on. In the next five years, 
We will also increase the number of those who are in grade R, four to six, from, 20, from 149 grade R learners, 49,000 grade R learners. In 2019, we have 149 grade, 49,000 grade R learners. We will increase this number to 216,000 by 2025. But this is not good enough. The number will further increase to 300. In Gauteng province, we want 300,000 great R learners to be supported properly by the end of this decade. So if you combine the great, the great R learners and the zero to four years, that's those, the early phases, the Gauteng provincial government is going to support one million ECD, ECD learners, and this meaning including children in ECD facilities, facilities over the next 10 years. So there will be 1 million ECD children in our facilities over the next 10 years, supported by government. Honorable members, in response to the rising demand of new schools, we will also build 100 new schools in the, this, during this decade, we are going to build 100 new schools in Gauteng. 100 new schools, we won't tell you where. <laughs> Honorable Mkwevo, we won't tell you where. <laughs> wait, wait for MEC Sufi to announce where these schools will be built. I want to say that in addition to this, we are reopening 70 schools. In Houghton province, there are 70 schools that have been abandoned by learners because they, they were not doing well at a certain time in the, in the period of their own development. So those schools were decommissioned. We are reopening 70 schools that were closed in our townships. We know some of them are illegally occupied and people are building shacks in those schools. We are going to remove them out of those schools. In order to respond to the demand for skills in the 10 high growth sectors, we will increase the number of schools of specialization and technical colleges in Houghton province. By 2025, Every district will have at least two schools of specialization that are linked to the 10 high growth sectors in Gauti. And by district, we also mean metros. So every, the, the two districts and the three metros will have at least two schools of specialization. We are working with the private sector to roll out and revive the training in some of the key areas especially artisan training in some of the key areas. We have already said the digital skills program is central to our development of young people in Gauteng in the area of digital transformation. So honorable members, I want to say, conclude education by saying, at the beginning of 2020, we have also been hit by a series of incidents which have led to the death of 18 learners and four educators in various areas in Gauteng. We convey our condolences to the bereaved families of these learners and the teachers. School safety has become a very important area that requires us to mobilize society to respond to the need to safeguard our schools. We are taking steps together with the law enforcement agencies, working with school governing bodies to enhance safety and security in our schools. But we are also taking steps to review the rules governing school trips. And I must say, as parents, we must be very worried when we leave children in the hands of school authorities and they get us to sign a document that says 
they must not be held accountable if something happens to a child. How do we leave our children in the hands of authorities and the authorities want us to sign that they can't be held accountable if anything happens? Why should I leave my child at a school in the hands of authorities if the authorities want me to sign that if anything happened to the child, they must not be held accountable? We have to change these rules because schools must be places that are safe and the schools must take care, must provide safe spaces for our children. They, we are also doing more than that. Our schools are riven by drugs. There is a disturbing phenomenon where our children are given drinks, including food stuff that are laced with drugs. And we have seen it just last week, the children in, so in Orlando who were poisoned by eating some, some stuff there, the space cookies that have stuff in there. This is a phenomenon developing in many schools where our children buy drinks and they are laced with, with drugs. So this is one of the things we are confronting as we deal with the issues of school safety in Gauteng province to ensure that our schools are safe, but also the violence that's taking place in our schools where learners assault teachers must come to an end. We're going to confront this together with parents, together with school governing bodies, and all those who are involved in education. So, honorable members, cheers. Access to health care is a very important measure of human development in, our, in, our, in a more human-centered civilization. We continue to make some headways in life expectancy. And I want to say that life expectancy is the most important measure of the health of any nation. I want to repeat this data. In 2009, life expectancy was 54, 54. 57.2 years for women and 53.5 years for men in Gauteng. Life expectancy has now increased in Gauteng for women to 67 years and for men to 61.5 years in this province. It has improved by at least 10 percentage points. This improvement is significant. We are also making progress in fighting HIV AIDS. We have made remarkable progress towards the United, the UN AIDS goal of ending AIDS by the year 2030. This is how we are making this progress in Gauteng. Gauteng has reduced mother to child transmission of HIV from 9.3% in 2009 to 0.7% in 2019. This is drastic reduction. And let me tell you what, we are well on our way to 0% by 2030. And we will meet this target way ahead of 2030. We are at 0.7%. So we are going close to 0%. In terms of the transmission of HIV and AIDS from mothers to children, we are also making progress on the 1990 goal, which is about ensuring that 90% of our population know their HIV and AIDS status, 90% of those who are infected are treated, and 90% of those who are receiving treatment improve to a point where the virus can no longer be detected. So where is Gauteng with 90, 90, 90? With the first 90%, we are at 90. So which means we, we, already, we are already ensuring that we have met the goal that 90% of the people of Gauteng know their HIV, and HIV status. The second thing is that we are at 
66 with regard to the second night. Now, this is basically about ensuring that those who are infected are, under, are having treatment. So we are, 66% is not so good. So people know their status, but they are not going for treatment. Only 66 is, out of the 90 is going for treatment. With regard to the last one, those who are receiving treatment, improving their, vi their viral load, we are doing well on this one. 84, we are at 84, we are close to 90. But HIV and AIDS remains a major threat in our society. So we need to deal with it in, a most, in the most comprehensive way throughout our healthcare system. Honorable members, in July last year, I identified the feeling of vacancies in our hospitals as a priority. So where are we right now? We have appointed 12 new CEOs in 12 hospitals and are left with only three who will be appointed in May this year. I know hey, hey, the commitments made were not met. We are reporting back on each of these commitments. Where we are not at 100%, we are reporting how far are we from 100%. We have also delivered on our commitment to provide 24-hour service in all 32 health centers that operate in the five corridors of our, our province. So as I speak to you now, the 32 health, community health centers are, 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 are operating 24 hours, and in many of them we know we must increase staff so that we don't have greater, great difficulties. Honorable members, we are focusing on improving patient care. If we don't have patient care enhancement, we can do all other things. The, the health care will still be bad for our people. So in order to improve patient care, we are, we are implementing what is called the lean management system, which has already worked so well in Hospital. It has worked so well for us in Liratong Hospital. It's also helping us to transform Charlotte Makaeke. In addition to what we are doing in these areas, we have developed service delivery improvement plans for 10 hospitals. I gave five in the state of the province address, but the MEC for Health has, gone, has doubled the number to 10. So 10 hospitals will undergo major renovations this year in Gauteng province. Because it is important, the infrastructure of our hospitals is very, very important. I want to report that we are fast tracking ICT in our healthcare system. We introduced ICT in education. We are now fast tracking the introduction of ICT in our health system. Our goal is to ensure that by 2025, all patient records will be digitized in Gauté, and we would have done away with paper files that often get lost. <laughs> the Gauté public health system has also been crippled by, amongst others, astronomical medical legal claims and lit litigation. Lots of money was being redirected from service delivery in order to fund settlements of these cases. I'm happy to report that the Houghton Provincial Government has established a special litigation unit which is now cracking the criminal syndicate that has been escalating these medical legal claims. This is a criminal syndicate made up of some of our rogue health professionals and unethical lawyers who go around our hospitals trying to enlist people who must, who, must be, who must be signing for some claim or the other, even if those people have had no problems in our healthcare system. So we are making progress on this. And the progress we want to report is that between October and November, we have reduced medical legal claims by 10 million by 10 million just in two months. But in the current financial year, if you look at the full fin current financial year, we have reduced contingent liabilities on medical legal claims 
by 2 billion rands, honorable members. I am confident that the Special Investigation Unit, which is working with us, will also go for these rogue elements that are involved in fraud. They must be brought to justice because they've defrauded our public health system, not just million, hundreds of millions of rands, but be several billions of rands. We are also paying attention to infrastructure, as I said. In addition to the renovation of 10 hospitals, in this decade, we are going to build six new hospitals in Houghton during this decade. Honorable members, why should we build new hospitals? The Houghton population will increase to 18 million people by the end of this decade. More and more people, that's why we need new schools. More and more people will be in our, in our province. We must expand existing facilities, but we must also build new ones. Where are we building these new hospitals? I will not say. The six new hospitals, I will not say where. Wait for MEC Dr. Masuku to announce where we are going to build those new hospitals. There is an additional exciting development taking place in Gauteng. We are working with the University of Johannesburg. to. We have signed an MOU for building of the new University of Johannesburg Medical School, because we need to train more doctors right here in Gauteng. <laughs> Honorable members, I want to conclude the health section by returning to paying tribute to Sefako Mahatu Health Sciences University. As I mentioned earlier, this university has played a seminal role in advancing transformation in our country. It has produced outstanding leaders in the political and academic field, and particularly in the health sciences and the health profession, not just in South Africa, but in the continent. Amongst the first generation of activists from this university, was Dr. Mulifisi Fularo, our late Deputy Minister of Health, and Confidence Muloko, Dr. Confidence Muloko. Dr. Gwen Ramukhupa, our former Deputy Minister of Health and former MEC for Health in Gauteng. Dr. Popi Ramatuba, the current Health MEC for Limpopo. And our own Dr. Bandile Masuku, the Gauteng MEC for Health, who was also the president of the SRC here. Dr. Masuku, Dr. Masuku, Dr. Masuku. As if this is, this is not enough, Sifako Mahatu has also produced pioneering academics and who include Professor E.T. Mukhokong, the first black gynecologist and the former VC of this university. Professor S. Mukhokong, the neurosurgeon who separated Mpo and Mponyana, <laughs> the conjoined twins. Professor Chifularo, who did the first 3D printed inner ear transplant, cutting edge operation in the whole world. as well as Dr. Tula Ngobo, the first female black surgeon in South Africa. And lastly, Dr. Polly Lempofu, the first female dermatologist in this country. This is what Medunsa is produced. Medunsa, Sefako Mahatu University. Those of us who are a little bit older will continue to call you Medunsa. Madam Speaker, let me turn my attention to crime because crime is the, is the top three concern of re the residents of Gauteng together with unemployment and poverty. Crime undermines our efforts to build a new country that is economically inclusive and socially cohesive. 
because it robs families and communities of well-deserved peace and harmony. We made a commitment to release by annual audit of the performance of the, the priority of police stations in priority crime, the 142 police stations. Honorable members, I am glad to say the audit is ready and it will be released by the MEC for community safety in April. The audit of all police stations in terms of their performance in priority crimes will be released in April. So we have met our commitment we made in July. We also met our commitment about the, the, the patrollers. We have currently registered 7,000 patrollers, 2,000 more than the commitment we made in July of 5,000 patrollers in Houghton province. <laughs> These patrollers are going to get uniform, all of them, from the Houghton provincial government so that when they work with the police, they can be identified by the, universe, by, the, by the communities. Honorable members, please join me in congratulating the provincial commissioner, Lieutenant General Elias Mawela, for being South Africa's number one provincial commi commissioner in 2019 at the South African Police Service Awards the number one provincial commissioner in South Africa. We know that General Mawela has been reorganizing the police service to focus on pro properly on fighting crime. And in the past 12 months, through Ukai Mulao, 48 operations out of 40 priority police stations have been conducted. 14,643 Suspects have been arrested, out of which 7,265 7, 7, are suspects linked to crimes against women and children. And all these cases are now enrolled in the courts. We want successful convictions. In addition, over the past 12 months, police have been cracking down on the smuggling and sale of counterfeit goods. Goods worth 500, five, 5 billion rands have been confiscated in our province. This illicit trade is killing our economy. It is destroying jobs, and it's undermining the local manufacturing of goods and services in our economy. We must crack this, but it is also robbing our, our system of the necessary tax that is needed. Further, police have been dealing with illicit business forums that are disrupting and delaying infrastructure projects across our province. I made a commitment in, in July last year in, in the state of the province address that the police are going to crack down also on this crime. I'm glad to report that with regard to illicit business forums that are disrupting projects, we have established a special dedicated unit led by this, the provincial deputy commissioner in Gauteng, and this unit has already arrested, 100 people have been arrested who have been disrupting projects in the different areas in Gauteng. And more than 200 cases are are being processed by our court. So I want to say, those who masquerade as business people in communities who go and disrupt projects and delay the building of schools and health services, we are coming for you. We are coming for you. We are coming for you. Hundreds of you are already facing charges, criminal charges. We won't allow the disruption of projects in this province. We will not allow that. In the past six months, the police have also been dealing harshly with the cases related to drugs. Ten laboratories have been closed down, and the drug kingpins linked to these laboratories have been arrested. Honorable members, you can't just deal with crime by arresting the street runners, the guys who are distributing in the street. You must go for the manufacturers. You must go for those who are the kingpins in the drug trafficking trade. 
In this province, we are going for them. We are not just going for the, the street runners. We are disrupting this trade. And we want to make sure we shut down these laboratories and we bring the perpetrators of drugs in our communities to book. I want to say it's what, we are not only dealing with drug dealers, but we are also rehabilitating those who have fallen victims to the scourge of drugs. Through Kimoja, our program to reach out and rehabilitate those who have fallen victim to the drug syndicates, we are reaching one million young people across Haute. This program includes peer educator program. It includes, it also includes after school diversion programs so that young people are directed to very positive courses away from drugs. Honorable members, I have no doubt that we need to do more on crime. And today, I am proud to announce that the provincial government says we are going to do more. What are we going to do to escalate the fight against drugs? There are, there are, there are the following interventions. The first, we are going to employ 400 additional traffic police in Gauteng over the next three years to enhance the visibility of traffic police on our roads and enhance road safety on our roads. In addition, the Houghton Provincial Government is providing 100 high-performance vehicles fitted with cutting-edge crime-fighting technology to the South African Police Service in Houghton. High-performance vehicles for our highways and crime response. In addition to these 100 high-performance vehicles, we will add another 50 vehicles in police stations that have been identified at high crime spots. And the Houghton Provincial Government will also buy 12 mobile police stations for public events and public spaces. In other words, we must have greater levels of police visibility where there are public events. This we do not because we are forced to do so. We are doing this because we want to enhance the capacity of the police to fight crime. It is the, the vehicles will not be enough. After thorough discussions with the police and law enforcement agencies, as well as business, particularly business against crime, we want to increase collaboration of police and the private security companies in fighting crime. Recently, the national headquarters of the police have launched a project called ES, Eyes and Ears, which is about collaboration between the private sector security companies and the police, the law enforcement agencies. We will, in Gautem, we will build an integrated command center for all the police and law enforcement agencies in Gauteng, as well as these private security companies to share all the technologies and the resources in every part of Gauteng to fight crime. What does this mean? To integrate all the cameras that are situated anywhere in Gauteng, to also use all the technologies, including drone technology, to enhance safety and visibility of the police. And private sector people who said to me, they will also bring some of their resources, including helicopters, to ensure that there is no part of Houghton that is not policed. So I want to say to criminals, you have nowhere to hide. You have nowhere to hide. We will use this cutting edge technology to track down every, every crime, every area where crime is. And we will also use this technology to police areas like our schools, uh, our universities, where young people in our universities, especially young women also are getting murdered, to integrate that into the, the integrated command center across Houghton. 
But, honorable members, we can do those things if we don't confront gender-based violence with more energy and more resources, we would have done nothing. And I want to say today that the, dis the violence perpetrated against women and, and children, particularly against women, is part of the major scourge, patriarchy in our society. We must dismantle patriarchy. The domination of, of, of women by men is the underlying reason for us to have violence perpetrated against women. So we must dismantle patriarchal relations and confront that by empowering women. We must also increase resources towards combating this crime, but also supporting those who have fallen victims. So how are we going to do this? The Houghton Provincial Government, in response to the President's Emergency Response Action Plan, will make the following interventions. We will provide a comprehensive network of 23 safe houses and victim empowerment sector centers to survivors of gender-based violence in Houghton. We have 23 victim empowerment centers that are going to provide support to survivors of gender-based violence in our province. We will do so by working also with NGOs and NPOs to bring that, their resources into this network to increase it, to provide support. We will also track every case related to gender-based violence in our criminal justice system. I reported to you earlier, every arrest made by the police now, we also check whether that suspect is not linked to gender-based violence cases and we want to make sure that these cases, those responsible are prosecuted. We will roll out vic victim-friendly facilities in our police stations and public health institutions. We will set up also a panel of gender-based activists who will work with us to ensure that provincial government programs and municipal programs are responsive and effective. Gender-based activists will work with us to ensure that all our programs are respons responsive. But honorable members, it's not enough to just help the victims. We must bring women into the mainstream of our economy. Of the 200, of the 2,000 township businesses, the 50 black industrialists, the 50 black commercial farmers, and the 20 black agro-processors that we said we are going to empower. 50% of all those will be women. In everything we do, in our economic empowerment programs, 50% of those must be women. We have already achieved a lot by, by, by ensuring that SEPO 1 million has 60% of the beneficiaries being women and that the Bazari scheme run by the provincial government, 51% of the beneficiaries are young women in those. So honorable members, I want to say, to deal with poverty, we are, we are rolling out the single window program to support poor households and vulnerable groups in Houghton province. We want a basket of services related to food relief, access to the to the dignity packs for children who come from poor household, school uniforms, scholar transport, school nutrition, and subsidies for the indigent families, as well as linking every poor household must be linked to a community garden in every part of the province so that the poor can participate in producing food for themselves in Gaute. So we want the poor to be active in empowering themselves. It is for this reason that we, to the NGOs and NPOs, I'm saying to you, there's no NGO that will receive funding from the provincial government unless that NGO is focusing on the implementation of the single window. Every NGO must focus on reaching out the poorest of the poor in Houghton province. So let me take this opportunity to say we must not only deal with the material well-being of our people, we must also deal with matters of the soul and the spirit. 
Matters of identity are important. Matters of culture. Because we are a diverse province. We are the creative pulse of our nation. We are the home of the sporting champions, honorable members. I made a commitment in July that we will convene the sport, the Houghton Sport in Daba, which we did in November 2019. So out of the Houghton Sport in Daba, we are consolidating the following interventions. One of the most important interventions we are making is that we want sports to come back to all our schools. So Sports Wednesday, every public school must have Sports Wednesday or Thursday because we want our children to also be physically active because there's a relationship between physical activity and intellectual development of our children. Research says so. So all school, public schools in Gauteng are going to be focusing on reintroduction of Sports Wednesday, we're saying Wednesday or Thursday to enable all the schools to share facilities. We want the school, the school leagues to come back again. We want these children to be the backbone of building high performance teams. We must start in our schools. Building high performance teams must start in our schools. In addition, we want to deepen our work on social cohesion by decentralizing the premier social cohesion games to 11 areas across Houghton province. So we are going to take these South Africans to go and play the, the games in different locations in Houghton to involve all of them in nation building and social cohesion. There's also something for everybody, honorable members. Those of us who are a little bit lazy have something now to do from now on. The hashtag Hanyani Wellness Campaign has been launched by the Department of Health and the Department of Sports to ensure that 52% of the people of Gauteng who don't exercise enough are now going to be given an opportunity to walk and do other things as regularly as possible. We want to promote Hanyani, not Hanyani, Hanyani. Walks, mass aerobics, and yoga classes in communities. We, we must make our communities to be more healthier. We must reduce the level of stress as we deal with other important things by making sure that many of our community members are participating in Hanyani. We are also going to increase investment in community games across the province. The community games are very important. They reach hundreds of thousands of young people. We are expanding sports infrastructure in our schools, and I am happy to announce we will build 40 new multi-purpose sports courts in the next five years, in five corridors, the multi-purpose sports courts, otherwise known as combi courts. Where are they going to be built? Wait until the MEC makes an announcement. 40 of them across the province. We will intensify our support for women in sport, particularly ensure that Houghton has a women's league, the women's football league. Women's football league, not the women's league. The women's football league. We are already providing girl learners with the sports bra to enable them to participate in many sporting activities in Houghton. We want to invest in sports tourism because sports can bring significant opportunities of employment and businesses in the Gauteng economy. So, honorable members, as we make a commitment to this area, we also want to do much more in, in the area of arts and, arts and culture. In the next five years, we are going to increase our 
our involvement in hosting major festivals such as Mushito International Music Conference, the Delicious Festival, DSTV, the Standard Bank Joy of Jazz, the Afro-Punk Afro Festival, and the inaugural South African Music Week during Heritage Month. We are going to host the inaugural South African Music Week in Gauteng. We are doing that in, during the Heritage Month. We are also training 221 emerging filmmakers, supporting com seven community arts events, implementing the mentorship program for fashion designers across Gauteng. I want to also say that we are investing in business, in creative hubs in Gauteng, working with business. We will also ensure we roll out sports academies, working with the creative industry. So honorable members, we are, we are continuing to invest. We will build 15, we will build 15 libraries by the end of 2025. 15 libraries across the Gauteng City region. And connect these libraries to free Wi-Fi. Honorable members, Gauteng is the home of champions. We are proud to be the home of Orlando Pirates. The home of Kaiser Chiefs. The home of Sundowns. The three, no, the three, the three national and continental champions. No, we are the home of Swallows, but it's not, it's not amongst the three national and continental champions. Uh, you need to do more, MC Lissouf. So, honorable members, we are the home of champions. Please join me in congratulating both Kaiser Chiefs and my Melody Sundowns in celebrating 50 years this year. We are looking forward to the 90th anniversary of Orlando Pirates in 2027. We are looking forward to the 90th anniversary of Orlando Pirates in 2027. Honorable members, I want to say that sports and football are major contributors to the Gauteng economy and indeed the South African economy. Sport has also played a role during the anti-apartheid struggle and sports teams were resisting apartheid and forging non-racialism in some of the most difficult days of apartheid. So we must invest in sports heritage and sports tourism. As part of Growing Houghton Together, GGT 2030, we will work with the football fraternity on the establishment of the sports museum in South Africa, especially the Museum of Football at the National Football Stadium in South Africa. This Museum of Football will parallel other international best practices, such as the one in Sao Paulo in Brazil and the one in Barcelona and Madrid in Spain. So the Museum of Football is quite important to help us tell the story of football in our country. These anniversaries are not just about anniversaries. So we are investing in memory for future generations to know some of the best stars we have had as a country, such as Masterpieces Muripe, Mudimwabolo, from here in Tswani, in Attridgeville. So, honorable members, I would like us to also pay attention to climate change because this is a very important theme in our, in, in our plan of action, Growing Houghton Together. We remain committed to the national goal of reducing greenhouse gases emissions by 42% in 2030. 
We must take action to reduce the carbon footprint. We must build the low carbon economy in our lifetime. But we need a just transition. We will also promote the development of the overriding imperative in every area of growing cotton together to protect the environment, particularly the fragile zo zones and the critical biodiversity ecosystem in our province, including the flat plains and the wetlands in Gauteng. We are working with municipalities, civil society, and the private sector to develop effective climate mitigation and adaptation strategies. We will ensure that 100% of our municipalities have an early warning system in place to prevent floods and other climate-induced disasters. We are rolling out 33 air quality monitoring stations to ensure that the air is healthy and breathable across all corners of our province. The plans we outlined earlier about water, energy, and security are part of sustainable management and use of our environmental resources. The United Nations SDGs are integrated in all sections of our plan of action to grow housing together, GGT 2030. We have a responsibility to lead in this area of sustainable development as a province. We also want to ensure through the, our plan of action, we deepen part partnerships between the state and various sectors of society. We can achieve all the goals alone. The state must build its own requisite capacity to act purposefully and ethically in the national interest and in pursuance of sustainable development goals. We must instill a culture of disciplined execution of all the priorities and interventions we outlined in this plan of action. We will vigorously give concrete expression to the, our, the national development plan in, in the con conditions of Haute. We will also intensify intergovernmental collaboration using the district model. We have drawn lessons from Terisano during the past five years, and we are taking this forward taking further action to enhance rapid response, community participation, and community engagement across our province. We will use multi-channel digital technology to improve direct interaction between residents and the, and the governments in, in our city region. It is for this reason that all government services will, by 2025, be available on digital platforms. In the various sections of this speech today, I've also pointed out the, 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 the actions we have been taking to enhance the capacity of the Office of the Premier to lead the implementation of our plan of action. We introduced the open tender system to make public procurement more transparent in order to eliminate fraud and corruption in tenders. It is clear that the the open tender system is not enough. I still receive many complaints from residents of our province about corruption in our province. We need lifestyle audits of public office bearers and government officials. And this process is now being spearheaded at a national level by the office of the president to ensure that this happens throughout the, the republic. I want to say to you today, Tim Gauteng, which I have the honor to lead. The Executive Council is ready for this nationally driven process of lifestyle audit. We want our colleagues in local government to also join us in this process. We are also tightening the screws, I mean the ethical screws in government. In 2019, August, all heads of departments were vetted by this relevant state security organs. And only those who obtained security clearance have been reappointed to senior positions. And I want to say that I will not appoint officials who failed vetting in the Gauteng provincial government. In addition to senior officials, I want to say to you today that we are expanding vetting to all those officials who are part 
of SCM, Supply Chain Management and Human Resources. Because most of corruption happens in SCM processes. And sometimes it is senior officials, but at other times it's junior officials. So everybody who's in supply ch chain must pass the vetting in Gauteng province. If you have escaped the open tender system and you are lying somewhere, we are coming for you. It doesn't matter what position you occupy. And I know there are officials who have been refusing vetting. In the sixth administration, there is no official who will be allowed to work for the Gauteng provincial government who is refusing to be vetted in the sixth administration. This will not happen. We have also identified departments that are prone for corruption and will undertake a campaign together with the Ethics Advisory Council to do a, a significant drive focusing on, firstly, law enforcement agencies are also taking bribes. The Department of Health is a big site of complaints around corruption. The Department of Education, including school governing bodies, major areas of complaints around corruption. The licensing centers of the DRT, that's where people are, pay, are paying bribes. And lastly, human settlements. Let me see my idea. The Department of Human Settlements. We will pay specific attention to this department to clean them up so that we have better government in Gauteng province. We want to make it clear that there shall be serious consequences for, for every official who does business. Every year we get a report about officials who do business with, with government. We will take action to, to deal with this. But we are also dealing with another phenomenon called the government price. Business people, I want to say to you, if, you are do, if there are business people here doing business with the Houghton government, this thing called the government price has come to an end now, the government price. Because many business people, you buy bread at one rent, you sell it to government at five rent. There are service delivery, yeah, they collude with civil servants to, to, to create a false market of government pricing. We are going to eliminate this in all the government tenders uh, this year. We will continue the drive for clean audits in all agencies and will ensure that we act on the recommendations of the Auditor General of South Africa in dealing in improving financial management. Honorable members, I want to put it on record because we continue to receive complaints about non-payment of service providers. I want to put it on record. As we speak now, 92% of invoices in the Gauteng government are paid within 30 days and 60% of them within 15 days. But let me tell you why this is not believable. This is true, it's audited. Now let me tell you why. We have, we have three areas where there are still problems. The Department of Health is one of the biggest areas where service providers for a long time, we have, we have accruals there. So when people say that the service providers are not paid within 30 days, so although we make progress on current invoices, but there are still those we owe. The Department on, of Infrastructure Development was also in the same situation and the Department of Human Settlements for a long while, especially in the areas around security. Uh, we, have, we have invoices that have not been paid for a while. So these three departments are now the focus of our modernization program to ensure that they are able to, in addition to delivery, they can pay service providers like others. They can get to the 15 days payment of service providers. I would like to report that I'm conducting a comprehensive review of all housing agencies and entities so that they can focus on our plan of action to grow Houghton together. Some of these agencies 
are no longer focusing on their core mandates. Some of them are revealed, riddled by divisions and mismanagement and corruption. And I want to say to you today, decisive action will be taken this year on each agency, especially those that are degenerating into the playground of rogue and corrupt officials instead of focusing on the mandate of growing Houghton together. So in line with the commitment I made in June, in July last year, we have also been taking action to support local government and to intervene to ensure that municipalities fulfill their constitutional obligations. I can tell you that municipalities can feel us now. In the first five years, they were not feeling provincial government. And that's why some of them are now even complaining that now this is too much. As the Executive Council, we are made in... Okay. I have gone to... I've jumped something else. I want to say that we will turn local government around. Mr. Maile, we are not... We will use the law, but we are not going to renege or retreat on our commitment to turn municipalities around. Every municipality that is failing must be confronted, must be supported, and there must be intervention. It doesn't matter whether you jump, that municipality jumps up and down and then call uh, for something else. When a municipality is failing, we must do so with consistency and we must be relentless. I want to give you a report about an important matter in Gauteng. We have now made a strong and persuasive case to national government on the ETOLs. We have made a strong and persuasive case on the ETOLs. This case has been made to national government, and I know that a decision has been made, and that decision will be announced, the president has, will be announced about the, the lasting solution. It will be announced, it is an imminent decision and an imminent announcement will be made by the president. That decision has been made, and that decision will be announced imminently. So, honorable members, I am concluding by saying that we must congratulate President Ramaphosa for his assumption of the chair of the AU at this critical moment in our history. This is the critical responsibility for South Africa and all patriots must fully support the president. At the turn of this millennium, our former president, Thabo Mbeki, proclaimed that we had entered the African century. It is indeed true that Africa's time is now. Africa's developmental rise is unstoppable. While the world economy is experiencing weaknesses, that are directly related to major economies closing their borders, Africa faces enormous prospects. The Africa continental free trade area is indeed a game changer that makes the African century possible. As President Ramaphosa argues, the Africa continental free trade area will reignite industrialization, boost inter-Africa trade, and benefit the largest common market in the world. Our province must prepare fully for this moment, and we are prepared for this moment. We are ready. Building on the work we have done in the past five years, we will expand subnational economic diplomacy and intensify collaboration with various provinces and city regions in our continent. We will also promote trade and investment between subnational governments in the BRICS countries. All our trade and investment initiatives will be based on the 10 high growth sectors that we outlined earlier. The Houghton City region's participation in the continental, local, and regional bodies will be heightened as part of our commitment to a better Africa and a just and equitable world. So growing Houghton together, GGT 2030, is about locating our current and future prospects within the context of a rising Africa. During this decade, we must make overall progress in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. During this decade, we must break the back of patriarchy and racism and make 
meaningful progress towards a non-racial and non-sexist society. We must also make practical progress in creating an inclusive, de-racialized, de-concentrated, and globally competitive economy that creates more jobs and unlocks the full potential and talents of black people, of women, of young people, of persons with disability, and of members of the LGBTI community. This is the decade to build a public health system which promotes healthy lifestyles whilst being able to provide access to quality health care and universal health coverage to all South Africans. We will make this decade, we'll make this the decade of changing the apartheid spatial settlement patterns by connecting housing and other public infrastructure to economic opportunities so that people can live closer to where they were. This is the decade to end corruption and entrench clean governance. This is the decade to take serious action to protect the environment for the sake of future generations. This is the decade to take practical steps to secure the supply of clean water, clean energy, and clean energy, and food for all. Based on the disciplined execution of our plan of action, we can achieve all these results in the next decade. And honorable members, every program we are putting forward in our plan, Growing Cauten Together, has been quantified, remodeled by policymakers in our universities and, pu and public policy institute to give us the confidence that we can achieve certain things. And what are those things? We can increase this decade the size of the Gauteng economy to two trillion to 2 trillion rands by 2010. We can create 3.1 million jobs in the Gauteng economy through the interventions we have identified in the, driven by the 10 high growth sectors. We can reduce unemployment from 29% to 15%. We can reduce poverty by 40% from 25.3% to 16%. Inequality can be slashed from 0 .0 0 0.70 to 0 0.60. That is the Gini coefficient. Crime can re be reduced by 50%. All these things can only be done if we work together. If all the spheres of government in our province are working together. And if business, labor, civil society, and communities are working together. We must refuse to be sidetracked by those who don't want change, and those who don't want progress. We must focus on indulamity scenario, the best case scenario, Nayele walk. We will not allow our country and our province to descend into the self-consuming public disorder and social conflict of the Guara Guara scenario. We refuse to allow our country to descend in that scenario, but we will also ensure that our country does not remain in the current Isibujwa scenario, where significant progress exists side by side with morally reprehensible structural inequities and persistent institutional failure, including corruption. The current scenario is bad. We have to change it as well. So how are we going to change all this? By focusing on the seven priorities and the major interventions we outlined today. I am ready to lead this decade. Tim Houghton is ready. The Houghton City Region leadership is ready. Let us get down to work. I thank you.